let's go ahead and move on to Chuck, who uh, pronouns he, him, and his question is, how did debate creationists who say there are cave drawings of humans interacting with dinosaurs? Has this been debunked? My first question, uh, Chuck, is, so what? Yeah, that's... I mean, it's not a question, statement. I don't know. Apparently, statements are questions now, according, yeah, according, to, to, according, to, according, to, yeah, according to J. Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, that technically, it's a rhetor it's a rhetorical question. It's more of a statement of so what, right? Because what does that actually do, right? Doesn't it? Th it doesn't actually indicate anything. Is it consistent in one view for people to have lore, you know, of say, um, some something that they believe in, uh, that's just extrapolated from some type of beast that they actually interact with, and use your imagination to go further and draw. Like to me, that seems way more reasonable than. Therefore, cavemen were interacting yeah. with dinosaurs, despite, you know, geological strata having something to say about it, you know. And it, does, it doesn't advance the, the God theory one step either. But it, it seems like it gave this, gave this person some credibility or gave the Bible some credibility. It, it's, I mean, I was destroying them in this debate, but it was just that one thing that kind of was kind of stuck in my, 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 my brain that is like he almost had a. I didn't have a rebuttal for it was the, I guess my problem um, or a strong rebuttal because he thought it was a home run that I couldn't debunk it on the spot. Well, it's interesting how this stuff plays out where people think that if you can't debunk their claim that that necessarily means that it's correct. But the, uh, I would, I would just ask somebody, I think, is it possible for cave paintings to be uh, the product of, of human imaginations and not uh, necessarily historically accurate. Is that possible? Um, and I would probably want to point to other examples through history. I mean, we can find uh, renderings, artistic renderings of human beings interacting with all kinds of mythological creatures, other yeah. gods, you know, go, go look at, you know, ancient Egyptian, drawings of humans interacting with gods that these that these creations wait kenneth are you are you saying by parity of reasoning that we should also once we accept that inference rule which is that cave drawings on cave you know caves equate to truth about reality so what you're saying by parity of reasoning we should believe in all sorts of type of myth mythological beasts right right that's that's where i would go with it and, and is of, is yeah there's pictures of yeah. bigfoot there's ufos there's all that right. Stuff. I'd be. I, uh, but then he, of course, uh, he had to pair it with. He had to marry it with Job, in the Leviathan, the Biathlon, whatever the uh, the like yeah, behemoth. Leviathan so and the to, behemoth. Yeah. 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 And, and it, yeah. So he was saying the validity of the could gives the Bible a lot of credit because there's this evidence. And I was beating him up about the evidence. There's no evidence of God. There's no evidence of the uh, you know divinity of you know Jesus. And then he pulled that out and. And just uh, and uh, well, so I mean that that's an extra step because the first step I'm at is like is more so just um, there's the we're trying to explain a phenomena which is discovering um, you know drawings on a cave presumably at a time before uh, people had knowledge of you know dinosaurs right and so the question is going to be like how could they have known that that's the case and if you start from there I mean for me it's as simple to say what would be the contradiction in that actually just being the product of imagination? We don't even get to the whole, like his attributing it to God or Christianity part, because even if we were to grant like, wow, this is crazy. They must've had some information. There's still all the left, like all you still have all the work to do that it's indicative of your specific religion, because I don't know, I don't know that it's not the case that I could point out any specific religion and attribute that where they detail, you know, something about large beasts or something, right? That's, it's such a, there's two sh really shitty inferences from my perspective. One, that drawings indicate reality, right? And then two, that we can attribute that to a specific religion, which has not been demonstrated in the first place. Yeah. Right. And so I would, I would, you know. There's two, there's two points to focus on with your friend there that, that there's two mistakes, right? There's two inference rules that are being employed. Um, at least two. I, well, and, at least, and well, at least two, two, two that you could attack right off the bat. One from drawings to reality, 
um, to the other one being that reality being indicative of the religion that he just happens to subscribe to. Yeah. And, 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 and yeah. honestly, like just the conversation, I mean, I, I, I don't have any idea if there are cave drawings of something that could be construed to look something like a dinosaur. I, I have no idea. I don't know jack shit about cave drawings, but if I just said, okay, sure. Let's say you're, you're right. You got, you've got a book that says a thing. You got your cave drawings. Um, how do, how do we evaluate the weight of this against like, you know, like all of science? Um, how, you know, when, when we've got different methodologies for arriving at our conclusions, you know, trying to evaluate what's true, what's out there, we've got your books as a thing, we've got maybe some drawings in a cave, and then we've got all of science, which is the, the byproduct of, of a, a rigorous testing, you know, uh, like process that, you know, we, we don't arrive at, at scientific theories by just pulling them out of our asses and claiming they're true. So, so when we're evaluating the weight of potential evidence, how do we how do we figure out what to pay attention to and what to take seriously? I'd be really interested in what they'd have to say about that. Okay. All right. Anything else we can help yeah. you with, Chuck? Kind of oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead. No, no. I just and well, and uh, well, the debate started with uh, him challenging carbon fourteen twelve dating, and uh, they found collagen, I guess, <laughs> in a bone of a dinosaur. And they, there's no way a collagen could have been, you know, in the, in the bone of a dinosaur because it proved that it's only nine thousand years old. And then it ended with him trying to prove that the di dinosaurs died in the flood. So I mean, I had mm -hmm. him there because there was no evidence of you know obviously any great flood. And so, uh, but it was kind of weird how he had that you know kind of that cave drawing kind of you know debate or that argument and uh, then he still twisted it at the end with some bogus you know ridiculous flood myth that did you know just uh you know i thought he had something there but then he kind of lost me on the on the flood you know, yeah i mean well, there's one flood. you could just always ask him if he brings up like you know dating or anything like that just if you know anything about it um just at, like ask him you know very specific questions in that field and if he's like i don't even know what that word is then like you know you're not really talking with somebody that is going to give you a substantive argument because they're just hearing what their preacher told them they couldn't tell you mm. you know like exactly. what an isotope is or they couldn't they couldn't tell you any of these types of things um and that's just to say that it's going to be more so indicative that it's being parroted it's not like something they've actually digested at and like looked at because i've i've talked to people that like that are creationists that at least understand certain things. Like they'll understand what DNA is, right? They just somewhere along the line are just employing their own uh, bias into it. But a lot of the times I notice, like 99% of the time, these people have not even looked like one, like for a second into anything related to what they're espousing isn't true. Um, yeah. And so it's just a prop. It's just, it's just, it's just a manipulative tool to get, you know, that hopefully nobody calls them out on their on their bullshit but if you do and you say hey you know um it, it, can you can you explain to me like what exactly goes wrong in, in carbon dating or something like that you know if they if they just like you know become elmer fudd at that point you mean for me you got them in the sense that they can't even espouse what they're you know committed to in the first place it, there's yeah. and when you so i the half life of carbon 14 based on you know carbon 12 i'm like what and uh well Chuck, I so I was I was raised uh, in like pretty fundamentalist evangelical circles and was a young earth creationist. And when I was a little kid, uh, was taken to, to classes at the Institute for Creation Research, which was like a, a sort of predecessor in a way to, to answers in Genesis. Um, I went to lectures by folks like Ken Ham, had the Kent Hovind VHS tapes in my house and was and was fully indoctrinated in this stuff. And. I think because of that, to some extent, I, I I might be less charitable with creationists than any other group. So because because this is the deal and this is what you're up against when you're talking to to people uh, who who buy into this stuff. Um, there's there's two classes in my experience of of creationists. You've got people who who purchase or who are otherwise taken in by the the, the propaganda that's out there. And then you got the people who are producing that propaganda. So in these two groups, you've got one group that is is fairly desperate for uh, something to validate their beliefs. And on the other hand, you've got people who are eager to to sell them 
something to to fit that that need that they have. Um, both yep. camps here um, are are participating. They're on two sides of a racket. Um, there and and I would say I I, I really really love um, R and Ra's series uh, on the the foundational falsehoods of of creationism. Um, it is it is fantastic and really digs into the heart of what's going on with creationism. Um, there's there's an old epigram. I don't know where it comes from exactly, but the idea is that when an honest person encounters evidence that is contrary to their position, uh, when they find out they're wrong, they will either stop being wrong or they'll stop being honest. And creationists mm -hmm. are forced to be in the camp of stopping being honest. It, it, there is, there's no nicer, easy way to say this. Creationism is bullshit. It is demonstrable bullshit. There, it, it is nonsense. And the, the people who buy into it, they're not buying into it because the evidence is on their side. And you have to remember that. They are buying into it because they need it to be true for other reasons. So you're up against some serious like psychological blockades here mm -hmm. before you're going to get these people to look at evidence and evaluate it objectively because that's not what creationists do. They start yep. from their conclusion and then try to reason their way backwards. It's, it's all confirmation bias and nonsense. Yep. So you're... Yep. <laughs> the deck is stacked against you, my friend. Yeah. I just, Dan, somewhere during the middle of this debate, he went with uh, the, Ray, the Ray Comfort cocaine uh, argument. And oh, uh, man. Again, don't even try. Yeah, this, is a, this, person, is this it, person is a victim. This person is a victim of con artists okay. like Ray Comfort and Kent Hovind and all these all these people. They're, they're, they're making their money by lying to these people about science. Yeah, um, yeah I agree. And, and I, I said more than once, um, I said I could be wrong, but I have a high level of confidence in, you know, uh, Darwinism and and, and understanding uh, how DNA and the second chromosome is, you know, fused together. Where that's the difference between us and our our primate cousins. And he thought he was, you know, he gave me the old uh, "Why do chimpanzees still exist?" And it's like it's just textbook, you know. He's just he doesn't understand the science, and then he gets mad when I say that, and he, then he started like, "Why do British people you know, still exist?" But you can't you okay. can't talk to this person about the science. They're not prepared. They're not equipped. They they're not they're not yet in a position where they can even make good judgments about no, truth I, claims. They like their their epistemology is completely I, fucking broken. If they hear a claim yeah, like I, if if we came from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? And think that there's anything to that. There there's there are steps yeah. that need to be taken. Of wait a minute, how do we arrive at our conclusions? Yeah. How do we evaluate claims? Those conversations need to be had with this person because they, if you try talking about science with this person, they they don't have the tools yet. And and probably one of the most frustrating frustrating thing is that I uh, it, he, he says I'm showing the same blind faith that he has, you know, in Darwinism or in biology because I can't prove like you know or or the Big Bang. It's like I I, I like, well, it doesn't. It doesn't guide my moral compass. It doesn't, you know. It doesn't. I don't. I don't worship the Big Bang. I don't worship, you know, uh, Richard Dawkins or Christopher Hitchens. Well, there's there's a, a there's a distinct difference between like right. So like, because when somebody expresses that they have faith, I'm someone. I'm fine with somebody saying that they have trust, right? Like they have this supreme confidence that that's the case. Um, trust obviously doesn't get you to like whether or not it's true. There's still that aspect. And so when we when we talk about someone saying you have faith one thing is they're trying they're it's like a last desperate attempt to bring you down to their level right because they've realized that like they don't have what you have which is evidence so they want to bring that down and undermine what you have but when you actually look at it the other way which is i'm explaining a phenomena um we can take certain things like whether it's like the big bang like um you know, whether it has to do with like epochs or um, like formation of elements or something like that, there's a data point at which we can actually go to that's going to build the trust. And it's it's not mind dependent, right? It's not it's not mind dependent on my trust on the proposition being true. It's mind independent, which when put together with my conjunction of like whether or not I believe the proposition, it's going to it's going to add to the weight of that. Right. The independent evidence that's not just something in my head is going to add to that proposition being true, at least my conviction to it. And that's fine. We both have conviction towards a belief. But the question is, are you really even adding anything to the conviction of your belief? Or is it just merely the fact that you think the proposition is true and you're just extremely convinced that it's true, right? 
in the case where he says you have faith, you just simply point out the fact that, look, the things that I believe in have produced future predictions, right? We said, if this is the case, we'll expect it here. And we go look and we find it. There's not much better fucking evidence than you can get. And if that's faith, then show me where you do the same thing, right? If we're on a par, take that thing that I do and show me that in your model. And if you can't, then we don't have an analogous property and stop being dishonest, right? There's nothing that's analogous in those two cases for faith if you can't take the most crucial part, right, and you're saying we're on the same level, then show me. Give me the predictions that are a part of my worldview that you call faith and apply it to yours because I've been asking the fucking question for 15 years. Yeah. It's also a weird flex to try to be like, I'm right because you're just as wrong as I am with your methodology. You know what I mean? Exactly. The, yeah. the whole like. And you're <laughs> claiming. Yeah. It, it, you know, they can claim that, you know, they have a supernatural creator deity that lives outside of space and time and then i can just say well i can show you the red i can you know talk about the red shift and how the universe is expanding and how everything was more local and how elements came you know about the furnace of stars and all that stuff and the, and it's like no it's like well let me pull up the gen let me pull out genesis like, yeah right yeah well, you, you yeah you present like helium hydrogen rates they're like oh that's all that's that's all nonsense light uh, abundance of light elements oh that's all that's all nonsense genesis it's, it's, one <laughs> It, it, it might yeah, be useful to try to have a conversation with this person look, look and eye. ask them. It, it might it might be beneficial to ask someone like this. You know, why do you think people think that the Big Bang is you know what happened? What's your impression about how we've arrived at this conclusion? Why do you think this is the scientific consensus? You know, where do you think that comes from? Yeah. And 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 open the door to the conversation about methodology because if all you do is just drop facts on this person, yeah. they're it's not going to matter to them. Because yeah. they think that they are equally equipped when they're not. Um, so if exactly. if you just try to go claim yeah. for claim with them, it's it, it's it's going to be very frustrating for you, and it's not going to go anywhere for them. They they need to 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 learn about how to how to think. Frankly, it's true because yeah. if you yeah. present if if you present somebody a prop like some argument, deductive argument, right? Like even if they're like really into philosophy and they accept the premises. If I accept the premises, the conclusion follows. They they'll still have this psychological battle, like where they're like, "Well, the conclusion doesn't follow," or something. And, and now that points to me is that you're not get, like even if it's a deductive, successful argument, you still have the psychological barrier to to get over. Let's not yeah. just because you presented this argument doesn't mean like, oh, this whole like you know thing that I'm dealing with internally, you know, that's been the the you know, the problem of me getting over that hump or yeah. at least applying critical thinking. Yeah. It's not going to, it's not, yeah. it's not going to solve that in some argument or some evidence. I think Kenneth is yeah. absolutely well, right like, about that. I've even tried doing exactly what J Mike was talking about with, with pointing out that, that w our, our scientific, you know, models that we can, we can make novel testable predictions and all that stuff that we see a world that is consistent with, what we would see if, if evolution was true, for example, and have had theists, multiple theists, just fire back with, well, I see a world that's consistent with what you would find if there was a God. And they, and it just ends there. They, they're, they're not, they're not doing the work. They're just saying based on their intuitions and their, and their, their, you know, sort of preconceptions that they're, they're, they're going, okay, well, I can, I can do that too, because they're, they're, they don't understand yeah. how to do the work of thinking. Yeah. I yeah. think that's and a great point. Um, with, go ahead, check. My, sorry. My favorite rebuttal is that is that, that you know when like I said when I'm talking to this guy and he says look at your hands you know there has to be a guy look at your eyes you know oh my God and there has to be you know intelligent design I'm like what bags of goo it's like we're so delicate it's like there's nothing special about us it's like you know we you know the dog has a better nose the birds have better eyes you know we have you know the, we have one tube that we breathe and eat and drink through it's like why you know peanuts can kill people you know wasps can kill me. You know, there's a, you know, there, why are we, why, why is there an argument that we're so intelligent to design in the first place is my argument because we're not, you know, we're just, we survive, we'll die of frostbite on, you know, 50% of our, our world. And, uh, I don't understand this intelligently designed argument. I mean, the, the more I argue against it, the less I kind of hear what they're saying anymore.
Right, but the but the way to hand wave that away is to say that the design was perfect, and all of the the negative aspects, like having our our food hole and our air hole, be the same thing. You know, they, they'll say that's a consequence of sin. That sin yeah. is what corrupted. You know, th so there's there's answers for all this stuff. You know, you just yeah. say, oh well, our eyes suck. Look at look at the eyes of something over there that's, that's way better. Oh well, that's just an example of what God's capable of. You know, a dog's nose versus our nose. That's just God flexing and showing us what He's capable of. You know, but then all the bad stuff is explained away by sin. So I mean, so the the yeah. the, the apologetics are there the and and apologetics is is a way of defending your faith right against reason so the again in, until you get to the foundation um it, yeah. it, you just end up going around yeah. in circles because they've got they've got ways of of easing the, their their own cognitive dissonance by by throwing up these sort of like bumper sticker apologetics and not just them it's just really the psychology and the philosophy of rich it's so powerful it's such a powerful poison that it was just kind of you know everyone talk about evolution i mean i think the way that revel uh religions have has evolved it's just it's so powerful that you know it just gets in, it just poisons their mind and uh it gives them the comfort and the purpose and it's it's almost uh a lot of these people are just lost it's sad you know because i was a christian but it just it just seems like these people just the purpose and the comfort it gives them is just it's almost like you can't you know it's it's this forever tap dancing that you know god sure. is uh, mysterious when he bad happens and it give him the glory when something good happens so sure yeah. well thanks Chuck. we're gonna we're gonna uh move on to some other callers so we can get everybody in before yeah. the end of the show but we appreciate we appreciate right. your call no you're all good you're all good oh, no worries you. all right have a good one bud